This is a tribute to all those who report their surgery on the SIGN database. We appreciate your reports, especially when you report follow-up until the fracture has healed. All of these segments were put together because they are recurrent themes when I review the database. I hope the information here will be shared with all sign surgeons in your program who do sign surgery and we welcome feedback. Femoral neck fractures are also an increasing problem. They're different in developing countries because most femoral neck fractures are due to high energy motorcycle trauma. When you put the screws in, be sure they are peripheral. In many instances, the femoral neck in an older person is hollow. So if you go peripherally, you'll have better fixation of your screws. There's a lot of differences of opinion, but probably most opinions say it should be in the form of an inverted V. Our pilot is very valuable because it's designed to provide tactile sense so you can make a tract up into the femoral head from the lateral trochanter, as in this one. It has marks to note the length of the nail, which should be determined before surgery by using the template. This is the inverted V configuration. This is a fracture in the gray zone between basilar neck and intertrochanteric fractures. And I believe those should be treated with a nail as well as the compression screws. And this is an example of that. No plate is needed because the fracture does not exit below the interlocking screws. This shows an intertrochanteric fracture that exits below the interlocking screw and therefore a plate is needed. The indication for the plate in hip fractures is if the fracture exits below the interlocking screws. This fracture healed up just fine and the patient did well. A wedge osteotomy is often used for Powell's three fracture or a fracture that has a problem and needs to be in a more horizontal configuration to heal. You can place the compression screws and two plates in and the osteotomy should be a green stick. And once you've made the green stick, you swing the plates down and put the screws in below the fracture. We hope you'll report these because this is a new technique. It follows the principles of all valgus wedge osteotomies and uses the sign instruments and implants. This is what the implants look like on the lateral view. We're still considering when the patient should bear weight in different fractures. We are also looking at placement of the sign nail in previously infected bone. This is a problem that occurs more frequently in developing countries. We're also looking at the influence of a delay between the injury to wound closure and nail insertion. We're also looking at new methods to prevent infections and open fractures, and we invite your comments on these.